What's up everyone, this is FP Stakes bringing you another tournament recap video here. This was a nice four round tournament, uh, Toxic Cup tournament that we had here in Colorado Springs in Colorado. Um, I was actually able to go 4-0 and and sweep this tournament, um, and I was almost able to do a complete sweep um, of all the games as well, but I, I did lose one game in this. Um, but let's kind of recap how uh, this tournament went, um, kind of see some of my plays. Had a lot of fun, and I'm really enjoying uh, the Toxic Cup so far. So right now I have uh, my Babarel against uh, the Worm of Damn Trash. These first battles are against Shockwave. You can see our teams up on the screen there. Going straight surf here because Hyperfang would be resisted. Now in the two shield scenario, granted that there's no lag, uh, this is actually favorable for B-Barrel. But um, instead, I'm just most likely going to bring in my Gliscor and farm down this Wormadam. So now uh, out comes the B-Barrel, which is a really good response. I really want to get this Earthquake off. If this lands, this is really great for me. Um, it does land, but I'm going to switch into my own Wormadam anyways, and One Confusion will take that out. He has Fortress in the back. Getting a little bit of lag here, but uh, we both agreed that we would just play it out. Um, on my side of things, it did look like he was getting some fast move lag there, but um, we just decided to continue to play it out. Yeah, definitely some lag there. Definitely getting a little bit of lag, but... Um, we both decided to play it out. Mirror Shot uh, is a good way to bait right there. Uh, if the Fortress lands the Earthquake, it is going to be pretty devastating to this Wormadam. But that is the nice thing about Mirror Shot, that it gives you that bait potential. Going to bring out my Gliscor here. If this is Earthquake, I'm pretty sure I, I would be able to survive it, but it's only Mirror Shot. Um, and I'm able to take that. And this Night Slash should be enough to finish off this Fortress there. He's running Wormadam and Fortress, so double bug steel types. If I had a Skun Tank or a uh, Fire Fang Hapowdon, it would do uh, a good amount of damage to that combination right there. But So we're in this matchup again, Babarel against the Wormadam. I know that in the two shield scenario, I can pull this out, but sometimes in this Toxic Cup, I've found that... Um, Winning the lead isn't necessarily that important. Sometimes it's more important to have extra energy and have shields. Um, so with Wormadam, it's running at Confusion as the fast move, which is a four-turn move. So when you're using a one-turn fast move like wa uh, Water Gun, you want to try to maximize your damage output and time um, when you're going to throw your charge moves there. Um, so it takes four water guns for every one confusion. So if you're sitting there and watching the confusion animation, make sure you throw your charge move, you know, around that third or fourth one to really maximize your damage output there. Otherwise, there, your opponent is going to sneak in confusions uh, kind of for free there and get some free turns out of that. So now we're in the reverse scenario. My Wormadam against the Big Barrel. In the zero and one shield, this is favorable for Wormadam. And I do have a pretty significant shield advantage right now. So I'm going to shield this up. I was expecting maybe a switch out there, but he stays in. I'm going for Iron Head, even though it's going to be resisted, just to save on a little bit of energy. It's still enough to take him out. In the back is Fortress. I really want to get to this Bug Buzz, but it is not going to happen. So I'm just going to go for the Iron Head to chip away. I switch in my Gliscor now. Um, I still don't know what this Fortress's uh, second move is yet, uh, and he reveals it right there, it's Rock Tomb, so that does hit me for neutral damage, um, whereas if he was running the normal Earthquake and Mirror Shot moveset, uh, that Earthquake nuke would have no uh, threat against my Gliscor. So able to take that second round there, good game. Going into round three. Um, Shockwave was actually the only person to take a game off of me today, so huge shout out to him. This is a pretty interesting matchup. It's contingent on Gliscor being able to land the Earthquake. Um, if you're not able to successfully land the Earthquake, this is not a good scenario for you. So I do shield right there, and I'm actually going straight for the Earthquake. Because I committed a shield right there, it might have been wise to attempt to bait. 
Um, normally, your opponent uh, is going to mirror your shield usage. But with top level opponents, you just never know. It's all over the place. He switches out there. I really want to get this Earthquake. I'm barely able to get to this. If this lands on the Bebarrel, it's amazing. Okay, I draw the last shield there. But now I bring in my Golbat, which is not the best response to Bebarrel, but I do not want my Golbat to be squared off against that Steelix. It would not be good at all. So this is uh, a little bit more of a neutral matchup because um, I do have a shield advantage. I really want to hit this Poison Fang before that Bebarrel gets to Surf off. This might just barely be enough to KO that Bebarrel, just barely enough. Steelix is probably going to come in and farm even more energy. This is really not good, but he does uh, opt to dump the energy right here on the Crunch. If he would have fully committed to a farm down, I would have been in a really rough scenario. Going to bring in Bebarrel. This water gun damage is totally shredding. He's got Toxic Croak in the back, so I'm just going to go straight for the Hyper Fang here. It's going to barely not be enough, and then I'm able to Water Gun down the Toxic Croak, but not until this Toxic Croak gets a charge move off. And now I know that Steelix has loaded energy, so I'm going to try to make a sacrificial swap in a Gly Score, but it's a total fail. <laughs> And now the Steelix is going to be able to land this Crunch, uh, which is going to be enough to take me out. Good games there, Shockwave. Uh, so I'm able to take round one, going into round two here. You can see I'm actually running Shiftry on my team. I swapped out Steelix for Shiftry, um, and it, it performed pretty well today. Um, I was kind of sick and tired of Steelix getting walled by either the Fighter or um, the barrel, and it's just like, it offers so much energy to your opponent. Whereas Shift Tree, if they come in with a fighter, it's gonna get knocked down really fast, and you're still at least gonna be able to rip off either a Leaf Blade or a Foul Play uh, to, to chip away. Won't give them as much energy, but. So these battles are against Fracko Mac. Flygon is so annoying to deal with if you don't have any ice on your team. And I'm not running like Ice Fang Drapion or um, Pylo Swine or any of that stuff. So Flygon was ridiculous. I'm barely able to wing attack that thing down and then throw a Night Slash on this Drapion that's coming in. I'm assuming this is an Ice Fang Drapion right here. Some people are running Bite. I get the boost at the last section, uh, second there, uh, which is pretty hilarious. So Babarel is going to resist these Ice Fangs, is going to resist the Aqua Tail. Out comes Wormadam. This is still a favorable um, scenario for Babarel because of my energy advantage and shield advantage. So I'm going to throw another Surf here. And I do draw out the last shield. I wanted to try to switch into my own Wormadam to catch that um, the energy right there, but... Was not able to do it. So I, I try it out right there. And this Bug Buzz should be barely enough to take out this Wormadam. Just barely enough. Out comes that Drapion again. again. This is actually a decent matchup for Wormadam. Because um, I am resisting the Ice Fang. Um... Even though that Drapion is resisting the confusion damage, both Iron Head and Bug Buzz hit for very strong neutral damage. You can see how much Bug Buzz landed there. Good first match. Going with a Gliscor lead here. I just need to avoid the Ice Fang Drapion and the Quillfish. So this is a very good lead for me. I'm expecting the swap, but I still have Wormadam. Um... So I actually make a blind swap in there into my Babarrel because I just wanted to ensure that my Babarrel would never be squared up against the Toxic Croak. I still have Wormadam in the back that is also able to totally handle that Toxic Croak. Um, the Wormadam is also going to have very favorable matchups against the Venusaur and the Quillfish, so that's why I was including it in my line of three. And it uh, has decent matchups against the Ice Fang Drapion like we saw there. Uh, so honestly, Wormadam is a very safe option against Fracko Max team. That's why I included it in my line of three there. Probably going to bring in Gliscor to commit to the farm down here. This Wormadam won't be able to get to another charge move. He still has the Toxicroak. Out comes Flygon. 
I'm just going to apply a lot of Knight Slash Shield pressure here. If I get the boost, this is really great for me. Could have possibly even landed the Earthquake there since uh, I, I didn't get the shield, but I do get the shield there. Still no boost. Still trying to fish for the boost there. These Dragon Claws are going to be very spammy and are definitely going to start to chip away. This Flygon is very close to another Dragon Claw. The Night Slash connects. At this point, I'm just going to let this Dragon Claw go through, but he might actually be able to farm down more energy. I don't want that to happen. I bring out my Wormadam. This is just going to be another Dragon Claw. So I don't need to shield this. I do resist it. And the Wormadam against the Toxicroak is a very favorable matchup. If he was running Dynamic Punch, uh, it would actually hit me for a lot of damage. So I do commit a shield there just in case. But the Confusion Damage is able to take it out. Looks like I'm going with this line of three again. This kind of seemed like my, my key to victory against his team. So I just kept um, exploiting this. This is not a good scenario for the Gliscor. So I bring in my Wormadam. And looking at his team, Wormadam as a switch in is really going to do well. Um, because he's not running a Fire Fang Hippowdon. Um, and so I don't have to be too worried about like totally getting shredded on whatever comes in. Out comes Flygon, which is a pretty decent response to Wormadam. As long as the Flygon lands the Earth Power, though. So this could be an Earth Power, but it's only a Dragon Claw bait. So I let it go through. Gonna get off another Iron Head here. Both Iron Head and Bug Buzz are hitting for neutral in this scenario, but Iron Head is a little cheaper. So he does land the Earth Power there, but I am up a shield. He still has the Quillfish in the back that I need to be um, aware of. So that's why I bring in my Gliscor right here to try to avoid that Quillfish matchup. And if anything, when the Quillfish comes back in, I can nuke it uh, with an Earthquake. But it's pretty low on, it's pretty low on health anyways. I'm expecting the Quillfish to come out. No matter what comes out, I make a blind swap into Babarel, and it's Wormadam in the back. If it was Venusaur in the back, this would be a very scary scenario, but because I'm up a shield, I knew that using Babarel as a switch in would allow me to at least get to a Hyper Fang, um, and I can commit that one shield. Hyper Fang is going to be hidden for a lot of damage, even in its worst matchups. So again, I'm trying to time my Surf to ensure that a Confusion does not sneak through while I'm throwing my Charge move. And B-Barrel wins the CMP ties against Wormadam anyways. So out comes that Quillfish. Aqua Tail's barely not enough. And with like 1 HP remaining, I'm able to get to this Surf, which should be able to take out this Quillfish. Good games there, Fracomac. I'm able to take the second round. We're going into round three. <coughs> Round three is going to be up against SVT Ollie. And so this is a very favorable lead for me. Honestly, my Babarel just needs to watch out for his Meganium and the Toxicroak. But this is like the dream scenario for Shift Tree right here. This is most likely going to be a Hyper Fang, but it's still not going to be enough to take me out. I am going to resist the Water Gun damage and the Surf damage. I get a shield here, which is absolutely amazing for me because I'm going to be able to outpace the Babarel. He either needs to commit his second shield or just let it go down. So he does let it go down. So that's a very favorable uh, interaction for me. I'm up a shield and I've regained switch advantage. Out comes the Gliscor. I'm going to be able to get my Babarel on this Gliscor again. I know his Babarel is out of the picture. So I'm wondering if he maybe has, um, okay, he's got Meganium in the back, an amazing swap on his part to catch the Surf. I'm, uh, I was maybe going to over farm a little bit there, but I'm just going to bring in Wormadam to be safe. I'm honestly okay even um, getting hit by an Earthquake here, totally fine. It does about half my health, <clears throat> so I do need to watch out for a second Earthquake, but these Frenzy Plants would be double resisted. And Wormadam totally shreds Meganium. Out comes the Gliscor. And uh, honestly, I can just let this go. Because I still have my Babarel. 
and two shields, I can honestly just water gun down this Gliscor. He's most likely going to double shield bait me with Night Slash, but that's totally okay with me. I'm not even going to throw a charge move, going to fully commit to water gunning down this Gliscor. And because I saved these two shields for Babarel, uh, I know I can comfortably take this match. Good games there. Shiftry surprisingly has a decent amount of positive matchups against his team. Um, against the Steelix, I'm okay with leaving that in. Against Meganium, I can go straight foul play. Against Babarel, it's very favorable. And I can actually beat Gliscor in the 0 and 1 shield scenario, um, which is pretty insane to think about that Shiftry can beat a flyer, but that flying ground typing um, kind of holds Gliscor back in that matchup. So I bring in my Wormadam uh, on this Golbat now. I'm okay with eating a Shadow Ball there because I know he has Steelix. And so um, honestly, Wormadam is going to be absolutely useless against that Steelix. So I am going to be able to dump this energy into the Steelix, but the Steelix is going to be able to farm a lot of energy off of me. Probably fully committing to a Dragon Tail farm down here, but I am resisting it. And so this is going to allow me to get off another Bug Buzz. Even though it's resisted, it is chipping away at this Steelix. But I don't want him to farm me down anymore. So because of this loaded energy I have on my Babarel, I switch it in and instantly throw the Surf. I get the Shield, which is really good for me. I will commit a shield right here, and I'm gonna. I want more water gun damage on the Steelix. Here comes the second crunch. I am gonna shield this up. The Steelix is pretty depleted on energy, and it's Gliscor in the back, so Babarel's gonna have a very favorable matchup against the Gliscor and the Steelix. Gonna try to stay in this and get as much uh, water gun damage off on this thing as I can, but this Night Slash is going to be enough to take me out. So at this point, I'm going to bring in Shiftry, because, and then I try to make a Sacrificial Swap on that Wormadam to catch the Night Slash. It did not happen, but this Leaf Blade is actually going to be enough to take out the Gliscor. Takes out the Gliscor, out comes the Steelix, and because uh, Shiftry is just insanely fast at getting to these Leaf Blades, this is going to be enough to take out the Steelix. Good games there. Going into round three, I like keeping shift tree in this line. Going to lead Babarel again. But the Meganium is there to greet the Babarel. So this is very bad for me. I'm actually going to use my shift tree as a switch in here. And because he was a little bit slow to that switch in on Gliscor, this is an unbelievable, uh, unbelievably favorable matchup for shift tree now. You can see how much damage these Leaf Blades are going to do against this Gliscor. It's pretty insane. Boom, like 50% health uh, knocked off right there. I can commit one shield here and outpace this Gliscor to the next Night Slash. Able to get this Leaf Blade off. This is going to be enough to take out the Gliscor, or he has to commit his second shield. So he's going to let it go down. I have regained switch advantage after that horrible lead, and uh, I was almost able to get off a foul play there. That is all right. Wormadam is going to come in, and or actually, I'm going to bring in Babarel because I know that he has that Meganium. So I want to ensure that my Wormadam, and I actually knew that, wow, that was an insane little interaction right there. I knew the Meganium was going to be instantly coming back in. And so I insta swap to my Wormadam at the exact same time to catch that um, to catch the Frenzy Plant. I do want to make sure that my Babarel is healthy enough to handle that Golbat in the back. And I had to make sure that the Babarel avoided the Meganium because that would have been really terrible for me. So shields are down right there. I am going to commit my last shield here. And Iron Head should be just enough to take out this um, Meganium. It is just enough. I bring out the Babarel because I don't want the Golbat to farm me down anymore. This is going to be uh, Poison Fang here. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get to the Hyper Fang, so I just go straight Surf here. I still have the Wormadam in the back, which I just honestly needed to get one Confusion off on this Golbat. And it should be enough to take it out. 
but it is very low health. Wormadam comes in, gets the one confusion, but I barely survive with a sliver of health there. Good games there, SVT Ollie. So I'm 3-0. At this point, no one else in the tournament was 3-0, so the finals are going to be up against Ghost Dragon. If he beats me, we'll have a big tie for first. Um, if I win this, I'm able to get the sweep. So this is a favorable matchup for Golbat, as long as the freaking Gligar doesn't get the boost. I need to land the Shadow Balls, though, here. So I'm going straight for the Shadow Ball. Hopefully this goes through. But I do get a shield right there. I was hoping that because I did not shield that first Night Slash, he would be inclined to not shield the Shadow Ball. But I am going to commit a shield right there. I really need this Shadow Ball to connect so I can win out this lead scenario. But he, uh, okay, he does let it go through. But man, that Gligar is so bulky, man. It tanks the Shadow Ball, no problem. He gets the boost on this Night Slash, and we simultaneously faint there. But he brings in his Pokemon early, which actually allows me to um, kind of decide what I'm going to bring in. Going to bring out my Gliscor. Um, because in this matchup, I believe I can just go straight Night Slash. Um, so I am building up to almost an Earthquake. But I believe in my head I was already fully committed just going straight Night Slash here. If the Earthquake lands, I'm pretty sure it would one-shot this Flygon. But um, going straight Night Slash, you have the possibility of getting the boost. And you do put on more shield pressure. So I do get the last shield right there. I'm going to let this go. It's just enough to take me out. And now the barrel's going to be able to come in, farm extra energy. This is just going to be a Dragon Claw. So I'm going to let it go through. I don't know what he has in the back yet. If it's Venusaur, I'm totally screwed. But a Skun Tank. And so because I saved this shield, I'm going to be able to take out this Skun Tank. Skun Tank is pretty scary because it's just such a great generalist in every cup that it's allowed in. Um, you're going to hit for neutral, if not super effective, on like so much in this meta. So... I throw the Surf here because I do not want these Poison Jabs to take my health down any lower. And then the Flygon comes back in and the Water Gun's able to take it out. Good games there. Round 2, I'm going to lead Golbat again. Because uh, Golbat has a uh, decent amount of favorable matchups against this team. I just need to avoid the Barrel and the Skun Tank there. Okay. We knew last time I went straight Shadow Ball and uh, he shielded up the Shadow Ball. So this time, I'm going to try to bait with Poison Fang. And it does not work out. So I believe I'm actually going to try to bait for the second time. Not going to shield here. These nice slashes are really adding up. Going to go for the Poison Fang bait again. Come on, man. Let's see a shield. Does not work again. Two failed baits. So this is really bad. At this point, I just totally sucked in this lead scenario, so I'm just going to let the Golbat go down. But, uh, but Barrel's going to be able to come in and farm up a lot of energy. As long as he did not include Venusaur in this line, he actually switches out to avoid being farmed down. Um, and because he switched in Flygon, there's, there's no way that he has Venusaur in this line. These Surfs are going to be chipping away at the Flygon, doing a lot of damage. I'm going to bring out my Gliscor because I want to maintain the B-Barrel matchup against his uh, Gligar. Going to go straight Night Slash here. Oh, I think this is the ridiculous game. Let's see. I get one boost. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I get one boost. I'm super excited about that. Going to go straight Night Slash again on whatever comes in. And then check this out. I get the second boost. This is a double boosted Gliscor, which is pretty much game over for anything that comes in. <laughs> and shields are down. Uh, at this point, I was freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I feel so bad <laughs> for this happening because that was kind of an unfair win. But that's what happens when you uh, when there's some random chance involved with some of these movesets. So I'm able to take the second game. Going into game three. Going to lead the barrel. I need to avoid the Venusaur and the Toxicroak. 
So against Flygon, Flygon wins in the two shield scenario if you go straight Dragonfly. So I'm going to let this go through. It's only a Dragonclaw. I knew it wasn't an Earth Power because um, Flygon gets to Earth Power around the same time that Babarel gets to the Surf. So this is going to be another Dragonclaw. He's just going straight Dragonclaw spam here. There's many times in this Toxic Cup where I'm okay with losing the lead if it allows me to farm up energy on the secondary matchup. He makes a really great swap into Babarel. So I bring out my Toxic Croak to farm this thing down. And this is finally a scenario where my Toxic Croak has decent PvP IV, so it's going to be able to survive this Surf. And then I'm barely going to be able to counter it down. Whatever comes in, I'm going to hit with a Dynamic Punch, which is going to do a lot of damage on this Flygon if it goes unshielded. So a shield does come out. I'm up a shield again. My Babarel is still pretty healthy. Uh, and has, I think it's got like a third health left. I'm going to bring out my Gliscore to go for a very aggressive farm down here. I shield up the Dragonclaw. He's got his own Gligar in the back. So I need a hope for the boost here because Gligar actually does beat Gliscore because it's just a little bit bulkier. But I still have my Babarel, which is going to do really well against the Gligar. He goes for Aerial Ace, which does do more damage to me. Going to bring in the Babarel now. This is going to force him to dump his energy into my Babarel. And then hopefully my Gliscor is going to come in and Wing Attack farm this thing down. And then I'll dump an Earthquake on the Flygon in the back. So just enough to get to this Earthquake, and I'm able to take that third round, which allowed me to go 4-0 in the tournament. I think this put me at like 30th in the world. Um, I did not wait this. I still have uh, more tournaments I'm doing this month. Um, but I really enjoyed this team. I really enjoyed this tournament. Um, if you guys enjoy the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to support the channel and be on my friends list and train with me, check out my Patreon. The link will be down in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.